I'm Patrick Sang, Global Citizen, Investor. Join me as I talk with global influencers for their insight, wisdom, and how they overcame their own personal challenges. Sharing positivity, overcoming challenges, creating one world together. I'm Patrick Sang, anything is possible. Welcome everyone to another episode of Anything is Possible. It's our first time to record in France, in Saint-Tropez. I've got a very special guest, Mr. Leon Chouchard. Yes. Did I get the name right? Souchard. Souchard. But, oh, that was perfect. Souchard, like Sushi, as he said. <laughs> so Leon is the leading mentalist in the world, been on numerous shows on James Corden, all the US, uh, known famously everywhere, reading people's minds, manipulating people's minds. What's a mentalist, Leon? Well, a mentalist is someone who knows how people think. And I'm using my five senses in a very, very sensitive way to create the experience of uh, more senses, six senses. Uh, and I do it for entertainment, and I do it for business, and I do it for, uh, uh, to get people to think outside of the box and become children again and have this all moment of wonder. And I remember yesterday I, I, I came to you after your, some of your performances and I mentioned that I'm doing a podcast and then I said the show is called Anything is Possible. What was your response? I said, that's me. Exactly. Because in my shows, uh, it's literally anything is possible because I do impossible things that would seem to people impossible, but then I show them how it's really possible. Great. So we're going to dissect a little bit about what you do yeah. so that we can hope to share with the audience and also hopefully we can inspire more young people that um, we really can achieve anything if we want to. True. So tell us a bit about your childhood. So uh, I grew up in uh, Israel, in Haifa, it's a northern city in Israel. Uh, I was very, very, I was pretty much like a nerd, nerd kid, geek. I uh, loved uh, Star was Wars. Or is I'm still here, yeah, I'm still, I'm still here, yeah. still is. But I used, to be, I used to be more, I, I was bullied, you know, all the, all the narratives you can think of. Uh, and I think that the stuff that enlightened this was uh, my love for riddles and mind tricks and Rubik's Cubes. Uh, you saw yesterday what I did yes, with Rubik's yes. but it started with like solving one and uh, demonstrating things to people. And I saw that by demonstrating things to people that they don't know how it's done, it, it, it creates a connection between people. Oh, it was kind of like my, uh, my mask, my, uh, my ability to approach to people because I was very shy. I'm still very shy. I'm, I, I'm wearing a Superman ring to remind me that I'm, I'm on stage, I'm Superman, and I'm off stage, I'm Clark Kent. Um, and this is how it was until I you know, grew up more and more, developed my skills more and more, uh, created my acts, perfected my craft, created the stories around it, and uh, here I am. Uh, one thing I talk a lot about in my podcast, um, you just mentioned you were like shy and stuff, right? I, I, I call myself a extrovert introvert. Okay, so, interesting. So inside, I'm more introvert, and I'm more of an introvert guy. I like to be more alone, spend time alone, that I think more. But then, obviously, in my business, I have to talk a lot, socialize, and meet a lot of people, and that skill is sort of um, acquired and developed over time. Have you used this skill of uh, the tricks and all this to become more confident as a person? Yeah, I think, I think at the beginning, you know, before it was my... Uh, my destiny and the things that I did, uh, it, was a, it was a mechanism, it was a system to approach the people because I was very, very shy. And I didn't know how to talk to girls when I, when I was uh, young and I didn't know how to approach people and how to be socialized. And those mind tricks gave me the, uh, the excuse to come and say, hey, let me show you something, let me show you something. And even if I, by the way, until now, uh, when I want to, uh, uh, get something from a person sitting at three tables before me, I would do something for this table to get the reaction, to get this person to see what is this reaction and to do it. So that was my strategy to, um, to approach to people. Understand. And you mentioned that you were bullied as a child. Yeah, yeah. I was bullied as a child as well. Maybe it's the same one. Wait. No, no, no. no maybe. <laughs> when you were bullied, did that have any influence on any of this, what you're doing now? Well, you can't think about it while you, while, while it's happening, only many, many sure. years la later. Uh, but but it, it makes me stronger, ev eventually. Yes. And, and until today, you know, Israel is a small country. I see, sometimes I see, I meet those people. 
and and I say, okay, so you are just a lawyer, or you're yeah. just accountant, or something yeah. like that, yeah. and I'm doing adventures all over the world and sure. doing what I love to do. So it's kind of like it's the revenge, revenge of the nerds, basically. And. Um, you also obviously went to the army for three years. Yeah, it's, um, ma it's mandatory in Israel. Yes, of course. So tell us about the experience there. So in Israel, unlike many many other countries, like the US, for example, um, people go to the army, it's mandatory. And then after the army, they start the college experience and mm. the degrees and all that. Uh, so I was in uh, in the Air Force, in the it's called the Anti-Aircraft Missile Systems, which is super important. It's like the... The, it's the sky defensing uh, defense systems. Um, it was very, very amazing. You know, you learn a lot. You become a commander. You learn, you learn management. You learn, it's lots of amazing things that you take with you to life that uh, sometimes helps you more than other things as well. So it was a good experience. I finished after uh, three years. Um, and then I started to explore the world and uh, travel. Understand. And do you, I mean, from my, from an independent and a third party watching from afar, um, I guess you are an entrepreneur because you have to create yes. your own process, journey, and you obviously have to make money along the way. Um, how did that journey start in terms of, you know, Actually, I can do this full time, and they could pay for the bills, and I can make I think, money I, from this. I think that the, the word entrepreneur, what you said, it involves everything. So, if I was not doing this, I'm probably creating something else. So, eventually, you are a creator. You you create things. I love to solve things. So, even if I'm in a meeting with somebody who has a startup company, I always have ideas. Always, oh, maybe you could pivot this, maybe you do this. Mm. So as an entrepreneur, you always think of the next thing and how you can modify and change and create. Um, there are the acts that you see, the stuff that you've seen on television, the big acts that I do, sometimes it's involved years of ideas and maybe I will take something that I thought of three years ago and combine it with something like this. Uh, so being an entrepreneur, uh, you can't be an entrepreneur for one thing. It's like something general. You always think creatively. Sure. So the show Anything is Possible, one of the main missions is to inspire young people. And mm -hmm, a lot of young mm -hmm. people right now are very lost, depressed. We have war, we have different things going True. on. So uh, what's your advice to young kids who want to become an entrepreneur? What are like the, you know, the, the, the different characteristics and the advice you would give them? Uh, first of all, you know, you know, there's a word saying, there's a sentence, there's no uh, stupid questions, there's only stupid answers. Uh, so don't be afraid to ask things and to create things. So even if you think it's like out of the, out of the context or something like that. So as an entrepreneur, even for kids, I always say, just, you know, if you have an idea, say it or, or try it or don't, don't hesitate. Uh, there's always a solution to things. If you think there's no solution, think again. There's always a bypass. There's always something um, that you thought will not work. I, I meet this every day. Yeah. I go to situations, they say it's impossible. I say, <laughs> check this out, and then I find a creative solution. Understand. So be creative, try to find different solutions. I, I always say, you, you know, everybody says, think outside the box. So I, I modify it a little bit, because when you think outside the box, you create another box. So I say, think between the boxes, between the boxes. Be not be, uh, don't hesitate to to say your words and to think creatively. Understand. So let's go back to the mentalist. So mm -hmm. obviously, um, this is what you're famous for. This is what your craft. Yeah. Um, tell us the the journey of when you first sort of like began or, or your first kind of experiences in this. So so as I told you, it began uh, began as mind games, mind tricks. Um, and the evolution of it is to tell the story behind it. Because a mentalist basically, you know, there's a few principles that you work with. You can predict, try to predict something or to influence someone and yeah. to get information for someone and to, to uh, play with your thoughts or to hypnotize. These are like the, the basic concepts. And the story changes all the time. And the metaphor has changed and the narrative has changed. Uh, so, Basically, it sounds weird, but basically you start with telling someone to think of number from 1 to 10 and you, and you see what kind of people choose what kind of numbers. Sure. And you extend it to 1 to 100 and then you extend it to 1 to 1000 and you start to understand when you look at people, 
it becomes like a second language to you to get their body language, to get their feelings. So uh, let, I'll do a little, like a quick one with you. Please. Uh, you told me you are from Hong Kong yes. originally. So I want to ask you to think of a friend from Hong Kong yes. who's not here that I don't know. So the first thing, and, and, and people at home that watching us right now uh, can try to get along and, and see how, what they get from you. So I want you to think first of all, if it's a man or a woman. So you're nodding your head like this, I'm looking at you, I know your body expressions, I can see how you're sitting. It's probably a man. I would also guess that you will think of, of a man. But this is the 50-50 point, the 50-50 chance, which yeah. is not impressive. Yeah. Uh, just for clarification, uh, you did not tell me no, this information. Yeah. And um, I just need to count from one to seven. Just out loud, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now think of the number of letters in the name of the person. So now your mind starts to count, right? So this is the principle. When you tell someone, don't think of a pink elephant, they immediately think of a pink. So, so I'm telling you, you everybody home now, imagining a pink, a pink elephant. So I'm looking at you and it's like, you thought of someone, and I'm not sure because it's not accurate science, but maybe he has five letters in the name? No. No, so maybe six. Yes. Six, okay, okay. Uh, and I'm not sure it's not, it's a common name or not a common name, maybe? Um... It's an English name because I don't want to use Chinese name. Okay, okay. It's, an English, it's an English name which is... Uh, don't give me too many hints. More in Hong Kong and America. Let, let's say. do this. I'm going to write something down. Okay. Um, can you think of a letter in the middle of the name? Yes. Okay, you just thought of L, I yes. think. Yeah, yeah, see, this is interesting. Yeah. interesting. So I'm going to write something here. Yes. And uh, maybe this camera can catch it, uh, but I don't want you to see it. So okay. I'm going to write something. I'm going to write something like this. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, and this is interesting because this is uh, this is a name. I don't know. Again, it's not accurate science, so maybe I'm off a little bit. And I wrote something down. And uh, what was the name in Hong Kong that you are thinking of? Kelvin. Kelvin. I wrote Kelvin. I wrote Kelvin. It's interesting. Amazing. It's amazing. So uh, Kelvin, if you're watching us right now, we were thinking about you. Yeah. It's pretty amazing, no? Yeah. I tried to like... Uh, throw me off. Throw yeah, I, fe off, I felt but, it. But That's then, why but then uh, I tried to not do it too much <laughs> because we're like filming and stuff. Anyway, yeah, but... Yeah. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Very impressive. Um, I think um, because I was trying this with Christian the other day. And yeah. he says, oh, I was talking to Leo. And then he told me and then everything that he tried to do on me all, all didn't work. So mm -hmm. I think you need a bit of training, you know. But going back to this is interesting because um, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, we're doing these things as a human being from birth anyway True. because we want to um, using influence to get somebody to do something mm -hmm. all the time right whether it is I want my mom to buy a guitar or I want dad to let me go to the cinema or whatever it may be right so you try to do the oh I'll do more homework so I guess this is sort of part of it but it's just you're taking it a step further yes there's level of influence that you would never imagine I mean if I Theoretically, if I manage to hypnotize you, I can get you to do whatever I want. It's like the highest level. I sure. can get you to dance like a chicken, I yeah, can yeah. get you to do yeah, that. Yeah. People doing it in Las Vegas in sure. those shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's level, there's deep levels of influence without you feeling influenced. And this is what I'm doing, basically. Sure, understand. To influence someone without him feeling that he was influenced. Sure. And, you know, something maybe a bit off track here. So. In, in a lot of like Chinese fortune telling, I guess a lot of this fortune telling stuff where people say, oh, when you're 60, you're gonna have an accident, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff, right? And a lot of time in Chinese uh, culture, it talks about the fortune teller when they reveal too much of the future, mm -hmm. it drains their life force. I don't know how to explain this, but do you think that if this uh, skill or thing that you're doing and is used for like negative purposes would also attract well, negativity. Well, there is a famous uh, fortune teller paradox. If a fortune teller tell you that when you'll be 50, you'll get hit by a car. Yeah. So you will not drive or you will not go yeah, out yeah, or, course, you know, yeah. so it's kind of like a paradox. But um, a, I, I guess you could use it for negativity. I always do it for, for, for positive things. Sure. Um, I really believe in positive thinking and really believe in uh, inspiring people other than using those skills to uh, to do negative things. There are people, of uh, charlatans, who who sometimes use techniques, similar techniques, to make bad things. So th course. theoretically, I could be, I could be. It's uh, basically a con man. 
essentially. No, right? I could I could ha open an office of like like spiritual office and tell you to think of someone who died and then pretend that I'm talking to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I sometimes I say a joke in my show. I said I also I also talk to the dead, but they never answer back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, you, have, you have to be careful of those uh, of people. Course. That's why I keep it very, very light, entertaining, uh, business. This is kind of this is the level that sure. I'm at. Yeah. And yesterday we were talking um, off camera about uh, helping people, yeah. right? And yeah. you're obviously you meet you know millions of people around the world, and then some people who have fear of mm. uh, different things from. I don't know, fish, heights, yep. whatever it may be. Yeah. How can you use this skill to help these people? So again, so it's important to say, you know, I'm not an authorized psychologist or a healer or something like this. I'm, I'm just a creative person. So what we did, we did, a, we did a pilot when we took people who has fears and we actually succeeded to, for them to overcome their fears by using techniques that I think it will work. So for example, uh, there was a girl who was fear of heights. So one of the, we took her to, to a journey. One of the experiments was I told her bring something that is important for you. So she brought her grandmother's ring or something like that. And we tied it to a balloon, a helium balloon, and we cover it so we cannot see it. But then we added four more identical balloons with the same thing. So she didn't know which one holds the ring. So we mix it up and we played a Russian roulette with those balloons where I told her, get the, uh, get the scissors, use your intuition, and let's cut one of them. She cuts, poof, and the balloon goes up mm -hmm. with a little bag, and oh my God, I hope the ring is not there. And I don't know, I don't know, we'll find at the end. I cut another one, and she cuts another one, and it goes up, and another one, and another one, and there's one left. And then I said, listen, it's a 20% 20, 20 chance that we got your ring, it's not a lot, and let, let's see. And she was there, and she opened the little bag, and the ring was there. So we, we had like a moment of wonder, from my shows, right? Like, oh, how did it happen? How did it? So we talked about it, but then I told her, by the way, do you notice where you're standing right now? And she was standing on a rooftop. She was like on the edge of a rooftop with a fence over there. And she was she was like frozen and the, freezing. And then I told her, you see, you didn't pay attention to that because your mind was occupied on this experiment or something else. Mm. So you see, it's within you. And she was like, oh my God, it's true. It's happening. So by doing this little trick, by little, exercise, I managed to, for her, for a few few minutes to overcome their fear. She didn't feel that she was on the rooftop and fear of heights. Most people who has fear, I would say, I said 99, you said 100 uh, percent of the people who has fears, it's between them and themselves. They're, they're, they're blocking themselves and they just sometimes they need to, to find the right path to overcome that fear. Yeah. The reason I say it's 100 percent is uh, actually Kelvin, of all people, he has this uh, thinking that every situation you have there's a door in front of you and it's about finding the key to open the door to go to potentially to the next door to you know resolve the situation in this case i'm just thinking i think as the show says anything is possible everything all your fears all the things that are blocking you can be solved it's just that you haven't found the key yet you haven't found the key or you or the door is a little bit far away from you and you need to find a path for it so but it's, it's always between you and yourself. Sometimes you need to get a little push from a third party, and this is where I come, up, come sure. in to, to do it, uh, or anybody else who helps you, but yes. anybody can do it. Understand. So tell us about um, who, who's your like, role model. There's, there's many people from, from Charlie Chaplin and you know, in arts, uh, to Eric Clapton, who have a guitar behind yeah, me. Yeah. So, uh, uh, lots of, lots of uh, amazing people who are very good at what they do. Understand. Um, yeah. And are there any like uh, books or movies that you've watched or read that you really enjoy that help you on this journey? There's many, many books around about uh, influence and suggestions. Then there's a good one from Robert Cialdini called Influence. So he, he actually explains some, some techniques how to uh, get the other person to say yes to you, to, you know, the influencing uh, techniques. Um, uh, talks about persuasion and ideas like that. Oh, all the books are good. Uh, the key here is what you take from the books and modify it to your yourself. Sure, understand. And can you give us an uh, uh, example of a situation where it was negative mm -hmm. and you turned it into a positive one? Oh, definitely. Hey, I told you I'm from Israel. Yes. So Israel is a small country, all over the news all the time. Uh, lots of conflicts. I did a show um, a few years ago and I opened, you know, I'm from Israel. 
And one of the gentlemen in the show didn't like the fact I'm from Israel. Okay. Uh, so it was like standing and going like he wanted to leave. So I was making a fun joke. I said, "It's like a live show." It was a live show, okay. live show. We have like a thousand people, and I'm from Israel, and I could see. You know, people are not aware when I'm on stage in front of a thousand people, I can feel and see everyone. If someone on third thirty-two will look at their phones, I will see it. Like I will, I will see. It. That's why I'm like watching everyone. Mm. So I saw this person when I when he heard I'm from Israel. He was like going like, didn't like him. Wanted to go with his wife. Mm. Uh, probably he has his reasons or of whatever. Uh, but I said, sir, I did a joke. I said, sir, standing ovation is in the end. It's not in the middle uh, or the beginning. And I, I knew it was because of that. And then he, he said, yeah, from Israel, whatever. And I said, that's fine. But before that, think of a number from one to a thousand. And he said, okay. <laughs> and I was guessing the number. 74 is like, <gasps> how do you know it? If you want to know, have a, have a seat. So he was like intrigued. And he sat down with his wife and he watched the whole show. And after the show, he came over. He came over and he enjoyed. He said, yeah, I, was, I, "I protected that." No, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> You're becoming a mentalist yourself. Yeah. So he came to the. Show, he came and talked to me. He said his reasons. I told him he um, why he is wrong or whatever, and we we became friends. So just to show you how it makes everyone what I do, no matter if you are a businessman or politician or whatever, become children again. It flats everyone and show them this, these things. And this is how I turn a negative, negative situation into a positive thing. So one of the key missions of the podcast, Anything Is Possible, we talk about creating one world together. So there's no division on gender, sex, culture, you know, whatever the different kinds of political agenda that you yeah. have. So we just want, we think that humans are all the same. True. And I think someone like yourself, which we share common values, is that, you know, we're global citizens. There is no, for me, there is no Israel or Palestine or Russia or America. Everybody's just the same. Yeah. Because ultimately people just want to have a better family, health. You know, I, will, I will say something, maybe it sounds a little childish, but when I, when I, now, 2022, when I watch news and I see things and I see gun, for me, it looks it's stupid. For me, it, it really looks stupid because because if you think about it, it's, it's so easy. The, the 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 conflicts all over the world are, are so easy. You just need to say, okay, well, let's let's be friends and start to negotiate and talk, talk things, and you know, um, in every every situation. Um, and then when I see it, it it's really it's, it's like adults playing with uh, with dolls, right? This is this is how it looks like. It looks like, and I hope it will resolve soon. Oliver. Unfortunately, this more uh, negative energy, yeah. things like greed, True. is pushing forward things like this. I think the only thing that can stop this, ultimately, the power is, is love, which is what we're trying to inspire yeah, and yeah, share, yeah. right? So, uh, moving forward, we only got like a few more questions. Um, um, what is sort of like your, your legacy moving forward of what you want to, you know, so do right, and accomplish? Right now, I'm doing many, I'm, I'm traveling all over the world, I'm doing those private and corporate events. I think it's it's pivoting a little bit towards uh, educational and towards motivational. It's called uh, edutainment, you know, stuff like that. So, um, so I'm working that direction. I'm creating. A, I'm, I'm writing a book. I'm creating a, a, a gameplay for for children, uh, like about the power of the mind, about sure. being positive and things like that. So I think it's going all there to more more lecturing. Than performing or combining both together. But passing on the message. Passing on the message. And yes. and what do you think as a positive person, as a mentalist, what is the key characteristic that one needs? Um, I think I think seeing seeing the good things in every negative situation. Also, there's there's you know there's a few techniques um, for positive thinking. Uh, some people think that positive thinking is very abstract, and sometimes it's not because you know if you you know, if you go, uh, even if you, once a day you give a compliment to someone, I said to you, I like, I like your shoes at the beginning, even, even something like that, and it was subconscious, but I try to give a compliment to someone, once a day, even more. It makes you become happy. Uh, there was a research about that. Uh, if you give to someone, and you don't have to give money, and you don't, just to help someone, in a small situation, you become happier. Sure. And you become better, and you become more positive. So these are the things that, uh, I think people need to start to think and do. And what kind of like principles and ethics do you live by? Uh, well, many. Um, I think that the, the most important one is to stay on the ground. 
Um, I met, I'm sure you've met so many known people, rich people, politicians, businessmen, people that we all know um, that some of them are sometimes forgot that they are very the same. Sure. Okay, maybe you did a lot of money, maybe more than him, or it doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, and I met many, many people. I, I met billionaires who came to me and said, listen, how, how do I become happier? Just like this. And I was like, whoa. You know, uh, so uh, the key uh, for me, I, I very important to be modest, to be with the feet on the ground. Doesn't matter if you're succeed, succeed, succeeding more, more than others. Uh, being a person, you know. Yeah, I think one of the, the the biggest challenges in life is to be happy. And one of the small you know takeaways from this is that I, I think you have to be here, present. And most of the time, you know, nowadays with business people, you know, whether you're a singer, or actor, very stressful lives, people don't take time off to really be here because they, you're checking your phone nonstop yeah, phone and, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, on, on anything is possible, we, we talk about um, sharing positivity, overcoming challenges and creating one world together. So, um, Leo, what do you think is the number one advice you would share with our young audience? Be good to people. Be modest and be good to people. If you succeed, share your success and, uh, and, and use it to help. Um, and be modest. Yeah. Thank you for your time. And um, we did this in less than 24 hours. And uh, it's a pleasure yeah. that you said yes immediately. And of hopefully course. we can share your story to the rest of the world. I hope so too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.